Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology Podcasts with Richard Jacobs. Future Technologies, poised to transform our lives for better or worse, are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used, or just around the corner, from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first in their covered wagons. They find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but we'll showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. Hello, one and all, to the Future Tech Podcast. I am Alan Thomas, and today I have with me Guy levy Urista. He is the hey. VP. He is the VP of Strategic Growth and Innovation at SciSense. Hello, Guy. Hey, Alan. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm 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 good. Let's 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 get right into it. Uh, what is SciSense? What do you guys do? All right, perfect. Yeah. So uh, SciSense is a hyper growth startup company, late stage startup company. Uh, we are a full stack BI and analytics a, uh, uh, software uh, provider or platform uh, uh, provider uh, where we allow uh, our customers to connect uh, to any data source they have, bringing the data and derive insights and understanding, analytics basically, from those uh, data sets in order to better run their business and better serve their end customers. Wow. Okay. That's a, that, I, can, I can tell you're a VP because that's a mouthful. You have to walk around giving people. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I'll tell you that. The C-suite is usually the top of the building where the air is very thin. So we compensate <laughs> for that with a uh, mouthful of descriptions. <laughs> and and uh, how long has how long has SciSense been around? All right. That's a great question. So SciSense started a, about uh, 12, 13 years ago. Uh, with five kids out of college that decided they're going to revolutionize the, uh, the BI analytics uh, market. And what they did for the first five years is they just coded. They were never satisfied uh, with the quality of the code that they delivered. They were never satisfied with really where they are. After five years, they ran out of money and they had very little options. Either they uh, uh, find a real job uh, or they need to start selling uh, software. And when they started selling software, they realized they had something amazing on their hands. They, there was an amazing uh, uh, product market fit. The company has started growing gangbusters. Uh, we have been doubling our, uh, our business year over year for five years in a row. And then we're, we're, we're still at very high paces of a uh, growth a year over year. Uh, so all in all, uh, really, it's about seven years of, of uh, selling but five years of uh, coding and fun prior. Ah, okay. And, and what would you and what would you say is the ultimate mission or ultimate goal of SciSense as a company? No, it's 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 a great question. So 
the technical mission or when you when you ask the techies, uh, it's about a, a simplifying complex data uh, for business analytics or, or for business intelligence. It is about taking a lot of uh, data and a lot of data sources and making it super simple for the business user to uh, be able to derive insights from it. But if you if you take a step back and you look at the broader mission, broader vision, we, we strongly believe that everybody deserves access to insights. It, it really it's about uh, uh, sort of the, the literacy revolution. Uh, think about the Middle Ages where no one knew how to read or write except for the nobility or the folks at the monasteries in Europe, uh, the old world. And then Gutenberg invented the printing press, printed the Bible, and then started printing other books. And all of a sudden, there was an explosion in literacy, people understanding how to read and write, and that allowed for knowledge to be disseminated and become ubiquitous. We are at a similar stage now with, with analytics and with the understanding of insights being derived out of data. Uh, where we are is a, uh, uh, only about 20 or 30% of employees today actually interact with analytics, with dashboards, and with data, we believe that number should be 100%. So our mission, our goal is to simplify the entire process and make it super valuable and yet super easy for everyone to interact with that and derive value from it. And so, Guy, what is it in your background that attracted you to this, that attracted you to science science in this industry? Yeah, it's, it's a good day. It's a good question. In, in general, I'm a, I'm a kind of person that, that is very interested in, the, uh, in, in uh, innovation, in, in breaking new ground around for a few decades now. That we, we're witnessing a huge revolution in the industry. Uh, this, uh, it's a third wave of the, the, the revolution driven by machine learning and artificial intelligence. Well, one of the core aspects or DNAs of the company, license, is, is radical innovation. If I go back to my own background, uh, where I started, um, so I believe you've seen James Bond movies, uh, Alan. Uh, oh, right? of course, of course. And so my first job out of college when I was 21 was Q, uh, pretty much the same Q as in James <laughs> Bond movies, <laughs> only I was doing it with not the spooks. Uh, but it teaches you a lot. It teaches you that the laws of physics are actually just recommendations. And I'm saying that as a PhD in physics, uh, and that you can really innovate and achieve amazing things. When I look around for uh, industries that are ripe for disruption, that there's an amazing opportunity for innovation in them, the BI analytics industry was such, such an opportunity, I couldn't pass on that. And so uh, I joined that in the, that the science about two and a half years ago to be able to revolutionize that industry and to be able to help build the next giant in, in the field. Wow, so you definitely have an adventurous spirit guiding your career then. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Every five years I change topic completely, learn the new topic from scratch and, and having fun. Wow, that's 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 an amazing way to do it, an amazing way to do it. <laughs> And so, in so while while you've been at SciSense, what were, what are some of the difficulties that you've encountered in putting together your 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 work, your projects? Yeah, it's another uh, good one. So the, the big challenge with the uh, with running a business, any business, and, and I've done it all from two people in a garage to eighty thousand people companies. Uh, the the big challenge, the biggest challenge is people. It's always people. Now, that challenge is compounded in a hyper-growth company. Uh, think about it this way. Our company uh, more than doubled the number of employees in the past couple of years and, and more than tripled revenue in the same period of time. And so what you have is a situation where the company that we were two years ago is not the company that we are today, and it's not a company that we will be in another year or two. That means that people that were rock stars two years ago now we have a different role that may not be as, as suitable for them. And at the same time, when you're hiring new people, you, you risk breaking the culture of the company. And as they all say, culture eats, eats strategy for lunch. So culture <laughs> of company is the big, big, big challenge in maintaining it in order to continue this ongoing success to make sure that success continues to grow uh, like crazy. So in, in, trying to, in trying to manage that, like you said, not having the culture broken as you're growing and as you're 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 increasing your revenue and you're trying to get through those growing pains. I mean, do you, 
how do you manage it? Do you look to other larger companies to, to as a, as role models? Are there particular places to go for reference, or how do you manage yeah. that? Yeah, so you need to be very careful with that. You don't want to learn from a, uh, other people's experience unless it's the right one. And, and the tough question is which experience we should learn from, which company you should learn mm-hmm. from. The way, the way we've built it, and we, we gave it a lot of thought. Some of it we write our own playbook. Some of it we borrow from uh, other successful companies that are aware in similar situations. But I'll give, I'll give you a very simple example. We opened a, a year ago, or almost two years ago, actually, an office in Scottsdale, Arizona, to be our, our friends on the West Coast. We're a New York slash Tel Aviv company, uh, and we opened that office in Arizona to be able to uh, for us to reach out to that part of the of the uh, nation. Um, to open that that uh, uh, office, not only we hired a lot of uh, folks there, we also relocated many people from the New York office to the, to the Arizona office in order to make sure that that office has the right seeds for the proper culture. We also made sure it's not a generic office. The office is the, 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 the brand. Our brand is yellow. So that office is yellow through and through. We have the, the same look and feel. When you go to a science office anywhere in the world, be that key of the Ukraine, Tel Aviv, Israel, New York, uh, New York, or Scottsdale, Arizona, or Tokyo, Japan, you will see the, the same uh, uh, design, the same colors, the same brand. Uh, you would walk in and immediately you know, oh, yeah, this is a Sison's office. I'm in the same place. And, and it is important because as you operate like we do on a global scale, uh, and as you extend and expand, you need to make sure that you don't create subcultures, you don't create different offices, you don't create a culture of us versus them. It's all us. We're all in it together. We're all changing the world together. You want to make sure the team stays kind of united, even though they're in all these different locations. Correct, correct. So, for example, uh, I've already been on about, uh, I want to say, or eight hours of calls and meetings today. And those were, those were happening across uh, probably five different time zones depending on whom I'm, I was speaking with, or five different locales, depending who I'm, I'm, I'm talking to. And it, it is about a cohesive way of doing things. It's a team effort globally. Okay, and then and, and, and keeping in this line of, of keeping this particular subject, you talked about what some of the challenges are. What would you say are some of the main achievements of the past few years, precisely? Sure, sure. So a decision we, we, we made two and a half years ago was not, not only that we will have the best technology in the business, which we proud, we're proud proudly promoting and, and delivering, but also that we will have the best cost satisfaction ratings in the entire industry. So this was a, a key component, a key, a deep understanding that, that we came to that says, yes, we, we will deliver the best product out there, but that's not enough if customers aren't satisfied, if we don't serve their needs. And so... We, we started a, in a concentrated effort where everyone in management is compensated around the NPS. NPS stands for Net Promoter Score, and it's a score between minus 100 to plus 100 that measures the level of satisfaction of your customer base, and it is measured automatically uh, through uh, uh, computer-generated surveys. Uh, and, and where we are now is we're at an NPS score that, that's always somewhere between 60 and 70, which is top of the industry, as quoted by external analysts, not us saying it. And we have customers that would walk for fire, through fire uh, for us and vice versa, because they realize that, that we'll do anything and everything in our power uh, to help them. For us, this is what's really, that's why we're really proud of what we've achieved. It's not about just a, delivering a great product. It's about delivering great value and making sure that the customer recognizes it making sure that when things break, and things always eventually break at such a certain point in time, usually it's a Friday night before a holiday weekend, we will fix it. We will drop everything in, uh, and we will make sure it's fixed. And so it, it, let's say I'm, I'm part of a, uh, I'm a new client, new customer, and I come to SciSense. What is the onboarding process like? How do, how do we start? Is there some sort of evaluation or interview first or something? Or how does it No, no, so, yeah, great. Uh, this is what's interesting. When you talk to our customers, we get high ranking for a great sales process, uh, which is not surprising, but then it, it improves after the sale is complete. What happens is that you have a dedicated customer success manager that would work with you, that will bring onto the call 
a technical person together to understand the, the state of the project. Through the sales process, we already understood what is the project you're interested in. We, we already helped you get your uh, feet wet uh, with the product. You already begin to understand what can be done. And we will outline together, setting expectations and, and clear outline, outline together a schedule, a timeline to successful up and running with Saxon. One of our commitments is that during the sales process, we will demo uh, to you a, using a 90 minutes call. Within a 90 minutes call, we will demo uh, uh, a, um, a dashboard using your own data. And all of that we're done remotely over the phone. Once we've done that, it's very easy and we gain your trust. Very easy to take that to the next level and say, hey, now where's the project? Let's have a plan to get live into production within a matter of weeks instead of the usual many, many months that, that many uh, other customers experience with other vendors in the market. Okay, so you guys are pretty upfront about this is what we can, this is what we can do for you and this is what it will look like. Oh, yeah, completely, completely. It's a... Uh, the last thing we want is a customer that thinks they buy one thing and they end up discovering they get another. We, we don't believe in that. It's uh, the beauty of, of what we deliver, uh, being a true self-service platform, is that but 99% of our revenue is, is, is coming from licenses. We, we, don't, we almost don't sell any, any hours. We don't need to make money off of uh, selling warm bodies. We, people or customers... They, they get up and running on, on their own very quickly with the product. It's a true self-service product that doesn't require customers to buy an additional services or hours to, to go up and running. And we, and we are able to showcase to all the customers during the sales process how this will be achieved, how this is done. And so that, that seems like it would be a huge benefit to your users then to be able to, like you said, just kind of just walk in and kind of start going. Yes, and, and again, it's part of the overall openness of the as a culture. So having been, and, and Sison started out of Tel Aviv, Israel, uh, with now HQ being in Manhattan, in New York, uh, but what we have is this very strong sense of openness, culturally, uh, which embraces diversity as well, but that also means that from a product standpoint, not only we have a full stack that we offer our customers, it's an also, it's also an open full stack or an open single stack. That means that we have APIs that allows customers to hook into the system whatever service they want, whatever capability they, they, they wish to add to the system. We don't guard it. We don't believe in the walled garden approach. We believe in the open park, and you can bring to the park your own picnic uh, uh, table and, uh, and your own picnic set and enjoy it, or you can bring your own soccer or football and play there. We give you the APIs to do with the platform whatever you whatever you want, and we we encourage customers to experience and explore what is it that they can do with the product. So let's talk about some of the ideas that you may hear from customers sometimes. Do you ever hear of any ideas that they may have for something that they want to do or something that they want from you guys where you may end up thinking, well, this is something that maybe can be done within – a few years, three to five years, but it's not something that could happen this year. That's, you know, I've yet to encounter such a challenge. I know it sounds bizarre, uh, but what I've, what I've seen in the market is when, when customers are looking at, at what's, uh, what they want, people don't apply too much imagination. They, there's usually a need. Uh, there's a customer need, and that customer need can be satisfied, say, with a roadmap that's maybe at best one year uh, into the future. If you're asking about what's coming five years out, uh, uh, I, I would tell you the following. We are possibly ahead of the entire industry, partly because of the DNA of radical innovation, like my own background and other people in the company, uh, where we outline technologies that no one even considered uh, to be feasible, and where we present it to customers, you'd see time and again, their jaw drops, the wheels start turning in their hands and says, wow, we never thought this would be feasible. But now that you showed us, hey, we can do this and this and this with this amazing technology. So in many cases, and that's how we run our labs, Sisons X, we would bring some really crazy ideas forward. Some would fail, but many would succeed. And those crazy ideas would jumpstart those juices in, in, in our customers that would come back, come back with amazing ideas. I, I, as I said, I've yet to see a customer that would stomp us, would say, wow, 
wouldn't it be great if you could land on the moon and do the BI there, et cetera, et cetera. That's how I haven't heard yet. So a lot of times it sounds like uh, you guys are the ones kind of expanding their mind in terms of the scope of what they might be able to do. And, and, and that's sort of uh, what we're proud of. Uh, we, we take that as part of our role. It's not about milking an old piece of software. It's about pushing the envelope. It's always about pushing the envelope. It, we have a, uh, the, the three core uh, uh, elements in our DNA are uh, radical innovation, obsession with customer satisfaction and immediacy of impact. And, and when we look at those, the innovation we deliver is tied to the customer satisfaction. It is tied to delivering impact as fast as possible. So we see it as our goal to push the envelope and not to be uh, trailed behind. If you, if you look at the analyst reports, uh, and, and be that a Gartner or Forrester and the likes, they would attest Sysons is leading uh, the visionaries in its own uh, market. We are the ones that are shaping the conversation, that are, are brave enough or audacious enough to really try to do things that no one else thought possible or useful. Some of them, you know, are, aren't that helpful, but some of them are really amazing. Like the time when we uh, released the first connection to the Amazon Echo, the Alexa, connected it to BI, and uh, enable the entire field of conversational uh, conversational analytics, where you have a uh, CEO today starting their days going into the office, and the CEO would go in and she will say, "Good morning, Alexa. Alexa, load Sysens. Uh, Alexa, uh, please summarize my company dashboard." And that CEO would start her day listening to uh, uh, Sysens give it a quick news or briefing as to the state of her, her company uh, based on analytics. Wow, that's a that's a great example there, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an example. No one, no one requested. You know, Henry Ford said that if he had given people what they wanted rather than what they needed, he'd give them faster horses, not the car. I'm a huge believer. That's right. It's let's deliver cars, not faster horses. Unfortunately, in this industry and many other industries, people believe in making a faster horse, not in creating a new experience completely. And so, for science. What does the roadmap look like for, for you guys for the next 12 to 24 months or 18 to 24 sure. months? So about a year and a half ago, we've identified that, that the key change coming to our industry is machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, ML and AI are going to be key, key elements in where the industry is going. We started aligning ourselves internally with resources, technologies, and offering against that. Uh, and now we're coming, we're seeing it come to fruition. We're huge believers, as I said, that everybody deserves access to insights, and we believe that machine learning and artificial intelligence are a key to unlocking that literacy, that ubiquity of insights uh, that we discussed earlier. Uh, and, that, and those capabilities are what are going to shape our industry and change it completely. If we're looking two years out, tools would look completely different, interact completely different, and would have a completely different uh, uh, look and feel and models uh, attached to them. We're, we're huge believers in that. The major announcements that we're working on for later this year um, that would augment that type of capability, there's some really interesting things coming down the pike. And what would you say you would want the big takeaway for our listeners to be from this interview? What, what, what final thoughts would you have that you would want them to remember from thinking about SciSense? Sure. So, so the, the real secret is focus. Right, and you need to define your core values and stick with them. Our core values, the way to think about science, is those three core values: this radical innovation, the obsession for customer satisfaction, and the immediacy of impact. We deliver against those again and again, and this is what really makes science so successful and so wonderful, uh, as attested by our customers and by the market. Okay, well that that uh, that is very specific, like you said. That uh, it's good that you it's good that you're so clear with it. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Yeah, because yeah, everybody isn't. <laughs> but, uh, Fair enough. But uh, what's the best way for our listeners to engage with you and the company and Sysense? Well, what's the preferred way? Oh, it's it's great, uh, great way, easy way. Just go to Sysense.com. S i s e n s e dot com. And, and that's download the free trial. It's free. You can download it to your laptop. Play with it. Run with it. 
start the examples preloaded on the on the uh, on the product, and you will begin to see the benefits right away. It's very easy. Within an hour, someone will call you and to figure out how we can help you maximize your value from the product. You run the free, free trial. We don't charge you anything for that. Go and play with the product and enjoy it. Enjoy it, and and if it brings value, we'll be more than happy to progress. Okay, well, great, guy. Uh, thank you for coming onto the podcast too and giving us all this great information and we, we appreciate your time and your expertise today. Sure, Alan. Thank you very much for having me. Much appreciated. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first in their covered wagons. They find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but will showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post a review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.